is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. How good is that? Welcome to the podcast, guys, for today. Um, we thought we'd introduce you, if you haven't yet heard this on the podcast, to a segment we like to call Pros and Cons. Pros and Cons. Yeah, it's pretty simple, guys. But it's important to do, and when making decisions on relationships, you're best to do a pros and cons list. Um, we like to then start with the pros. You'll hear us celebrate the good parts of the relationship, and then we'll drag your partner through the absolute mud. <laughs> And extract Everybody. all the filth out of your partner in the cons list. Yeah, it's mm. tough. Tommy, didn't you, for your 30th birthday, you had a pros and cons dress-up party, didn't you? Um, oh, that was pros and connies. It, it, was a, oh. it was actually a hose and cons party. Oh, um, okay. And uh, ex-cons, yeah, I had to dress up as a, an yes. ex-con or oh a pro. God. Yeah. When you say just, pro, you mean just, like a professional golfer? Yes, Professional correct. actor? Yes. Yeah. Anything professional. Yes, anything professional, yeah. even the oldest forms of professional trade. Whatever it was, Tom, you yeah. welcomed them to your party. And you guys didn't turn up to despite the numerous uh, invitations and you told me you'd be there. But it was certainly, yeah, very, a wonderful night at Jackson's on George. Uh, so thank you, everyone. <laughs> yeah, good Jackson's on George. Pretty, I like the old Jackson's better than oh, the new Jackson's, oh, to be honest with you. you can't say that. You can't say that, mate. You're way what? out of line. Kate, you would have had some no. great oh, nights at Jackson's. God. If those walls could talk. Oh, Poor yeah. Jackson. All yeah. right, you'll hear pros yeah. and cons on the podcast. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Jesus is getting light in the morning, isn't it? Oh, tell okay. me. I feel like it's it gets light this time of the morning, this time of the year, every mm-hmm. year. It's crazy, isn't it? Isn't weird? It? It's just, it just, I don't know. Do you it's know weird. what? When I was in the shower this morning in the bathroom, it would have been about three thirty. I could hear the roaster crowing, crowing. Is it crowing? I could hear the ro- rooster next roaster. door. Yeah, what, you got the roaster and I going. Said to the yeah, rooster, you're going to be early to have a feed. You're going to be roasted in a minute, mate. <laughs> That's how light it's getting. I couldn't hey, believe it. Sun was coming hey, up. Actually, that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the rooster. <laughs> Be- Do you know what that reminds me of? Go on. Remember, we should bring this back, Tommy. Remember this one? Early in the morning and it's Monday. Oh. On, on, it's on, on, on Monday. Yeah, yeah. On, on, Monday. Yeah, yeah. On, on, Monday. Yeah, yeah. On, on, Talk, can we talk about the rooster? And if you've got a rooster in your area at the moment, 13, 20, 10, that you would like to... Oh, gosh, because roosters are getting up early. They're waking us all up. Harold Brown, poor Harold, he's 80 years of age. Harold's just been given a $400 fine because his rooster's been crowing at 3 a.m. in the morning. You can't do that. I had a rooster in my yard once and you didn't... They reckon it took long for the neighbours to come and knock on the door and say, you can't do that. You're not allowed to do that. Yeah, but they are lovely. To yeah. have around, and they—it's—it's it's the signal to start the day. Yeah, but you don't need to be woken up by a rooster who's deciding when you need to get up. Yeah. I've got an alarm clock, and I'll dictate when I get up, yeah. not the thing with the feathers. I've been working with a couple of young blokes at the moment, um, um, and can, can I? That's just young people are just—they're. They're, what do you mean? Do, what do you mean? Up. You've been working with him? You've been teaching them a bit, or no, no, no? We do it. We do a music festival, right? Oh yeah. And, but they sleep in whip, and I must, I, I must transport myself back to when you finish school and remember you, you sleep in a little bit. Like these guys are, I can't get in contact with them till about nine nine thirty in the morning, and it really so, spins me so out. Their mes- people are sleeping in at that time. They're messaging you, going, <laughs> "Yep, let's do it, Fitz. First thing, meet you at 11. <laughs> Yep. It's really freaking me out. First thing in the morning. See you at midday. Anyway, Harold's Harold got a four hundred dollar fine. He's eighty years of age because his rooster's crying. The reason why I want to say it, because the headline on the news article is go. very, very good. Silly can old I, cock. Can I get a drum roll, please? What is Jess? it? Here we because go. Because it's really good. Cock or doodle, don't man finder over rooster's morning noise. Okay, so you've obviously that, been reading the it, NT I, news. I just thought that was a really good headline. It's clever, isn't cockle, it? Cockle doodle, don't. I mean, do you want to do, <laughs> do you want to do Monday Monday, or do you want to do the headline <laughs> off? Be good. G- uh, Gabby's given us a call from Campbelltown. You got a rooster in the area, Gab? 
Yeah, the people at the back of me have just bought, recently bought chickens and roosters and they let them free range in their backyard and we actually have cats, so we're hoping it doesn't end too well. Well, or are you hoping that the cats sort of <laughs> just quieten that rooster down at 100 miles an hour? Gabby, yeah, the cats can get the rooster, but maybe not the chickens. No, leave the chickens and hopefully they drop some eggs around, but you're right, the rooster, that is a pain in the bum, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But it's just yeah. lucky that I get up for work early, so... That's yeah. the only mess the plus side. I suppose mm. we have to find a positive. Good work, Gabs. Tom will I mean, sometimes you... dress as a fox and actually go to people's places and remove <laughs> roosters. Thank you, Tom, and your fox outfit. Oh, no, absolutely. Anything for the show, guys. Fox Any, leader. Anything for the show. The uh, old brown snake. You, you could slither a couple of brown <laughs> snakes in there as well, couldn't you? They love a chicken. Just, they love a chicken just or a rooster. Any animal that'll <laughs> kill a rooster over the back fence. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. I like her, but she's no good in bed. I like him, but he's got an ugly head. Should we go or should we stay with them? Make a list of pros and cons. <laughs> Yes, it is. Pros and cons. The idea that if you don't know what to do in a relationship, you write your list, you write your pros and your cons, you draw a line down the centre of the page, and then you call a radio show called Nova, uh, Fitzy Whipper, Kate Ritchie, and you read out the pros and cons. It can be very effective. And we can help you whether to hang on to it or dump them. Mm. Nah, look, you know what? Bit of advice from Uncle Fitzy here. I'd still go with the gut feel, mate. The gut feel is always... What are you saying that you wouldn't call a radio station oh, and ask on. people like us what mm-hmm. to do with your well, life? Well, well, you, well, you can. Let's have a bit of entertainment. We can have a bit of fun with it. But in the end, you've no. got to go with your gut. Absolutely. If you call your best friend, you're not in the running to go to Taylor Swift. Yeah, <laughs> yeah true, there true. Is, true. There is a difference. Uh, Tasman and Hornsby, Hello. Hello. Tamsin. Oh, Tamsin, hello. Um, <laughs> That's a guess. She's not a big body of water. <laughs> Very hard to Tra- get across the Trans Tasman. Um, <laughs> what have you got oh for us, gosh. Tamsin? You're in a relationship, right? Yeah, so for about two months now. Oh, okay. Right. Where, What's, it, can, we, can we ask his name? Are you going to change his name, Tams, Tamsin? <laughs> Uh, we can call him Simon. Simon, Simon. okay. Mm. Do you want to start with the pros? Let's go for the pros. Okay, so my pros is he loves cooking for me. Oh, hello. Right. Brilliant. <laughs> um, he has a super nice family. Good. They're really welcoming and stuff. That's good. Oh. met after eight weeks. Okay, wow. you'd be marrying into so it. So beautiful. And <laughs> yeah. what else? And ever since we started dating, he... Every single morning and every single night, messages, good morning and good night. Hasn't missed oh, a day. Oh, my so, God. That is so, so cute. How, can I just quickly oh. ask how, how old you are, Tamsin? <laughs> 24. Amazing. Oh, okay, great. Hang on no. to it. Well, what could possibly go wrong? We haven't heard the cons. He's just got out of jail, first of all. No, Second of all, Tams, and what, are the con- what, are, what other cons do you have? Okay, so the cons is he doesn't really know how to show emotions unless intoxicated. Oh. Okay. But you know what? You can work on that. Oh. Yeah. By, by well, and, the, and the messages in the morning and the evening are him... Um, under you know a veil, being he's no, re- he's still reaching out and letting you know that he's thinking about you. Yeah. But yeah, I agree. <laughs> There's something he needs to work okay. on. Um, he's also very secretive with his phone. Like it's always turned to the side, or like he never shows it really in front of me. Oh, yeah, but see, if it's only mm. been two months, that's understandable. You don't deserve to see what's in that phone quite what? yet. No, what do you mean? Like, if, we're, don't if we're lying down next to each other, he'll have it, like, facing yeah. the other way. Right. Okay. Well, that's Even interesting. If we're just and, and anything else, Tam? Um, he also has, like, <laughs> a super loud and squeaky kind of laugh. So, like, oh. whenever he laughs in public, oh. like, everyone stares at us. You've got to get rid of him. Do you think what? I had a friend like this? Do you think what? he might be gay? Do you think Simon's gay? What? Oh, uh, I think he's a little fruity, but maybe not. Maybe bi. Right, oh, wow. by curious, why, yeah. Why would he be? I had a mate and he just struggled to show emotion um, through, you know, whenever their relationship was one-on-one and their intimacy was weird as well and it just didn't work for him. Um, mm. But when he was with a gent, he was far more comfortable and weird. truly I himself. I don't like it when you use the word weird. 
Why what? I don't know. How did I put it in a sentence then? Oh, intimacy was weird. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I'm trying to work out <laughs> what it is. Intimacy was different. I, oh. See, Tamsin, I, look, you can work on the conf- the confidence thing. It's only, it's a yeah. fresh relationship. So he's probably, it's he finds it very hard to show emotion. I mean, you can work on that. You can get over that one. I do find the phone a little bit weird if he's always turning away yeah. when you're in bed. Well, um, yeah. That's the thing you have to worry about. But now, I, I, now that you've said that, he does have a really good, um, like, guy best friend. They've been best friends for, like, yeah. 10 years. Oh, no. Now friends. you've planted the no, seed. No, he, well, he's got his phone turned away because he's on grind. No, he's not. He, sometimes I have put my phone face down because Why? I don't because it's on silent and I don't want Hinge. the distraction. I'm not on any of those. I, I, I don't want the distraction. I like to be present. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, what are we going to do? here because you know what a family a good cook right there's some really good qualities oh, yeah do you like do you like hanging out with him yeah I well do. maybe it, he's it just your friend good. maybe he's a friend Ugh. she didn't call the show because she needed no, to know whether I'm he was saying, a right please, you can be attracted to someone and then there are certain you know you can't put a square box in a round hole kind of thing what do you mean by that well you know like a peg, sorry. Um, and, no, um, I agree with you, Kate. I think this this might be a friendship, Tamsin. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, mate. That is okay. And you sound you sound great. Yeah, you, know, you do. You got a whole new, wide world out there for you. You got a new best friend. <laughs> right, okay, here's another question, Tamsin. If you are going to Vancouver to see Taylor Swift, would you take him <laughs> with you? Oh, no way, no. Yeah, well, well, that okay. would be a dead giveaway if he squealed yeah. at, the, at the idea <laughs> of it? being a plus one. That was a double double. Oh, my God, we're going to Vancouver! Oh, you're, not, you're not anymore because you just did that. All right, Leanne and Five Doc, welcome to the show. Hi, how you going, guys? Hi, Leanne, Leanne. doing well. Um, do you want to assign a name to the love interest? Yeah, I'll give you a random name. I don't want to give his real name, but his name's David. Dave the oh, I reckon really? his name is David. So his name's David. <laughs> that is gross. That's a con. Uh, Leanne, how long have you been together? Six months now. Okay. okay. All right, here we go. This is exciting. Let's start with the pros. Um, oh, he likes to take me on the holiday oh, yeah. and spoil me, which is very, very nice. Um, Another holiday. I happen to like perfume, so I get perfume quite regularly. Okay. Oh, perfume? What's your really favourite? Quite regularly in a six-month okay. period, yeah. What yeah. fragrance are you going with at the moment, Leanne? Um, I like the Estee Lauder J'adore. Oh, J'adore. Uh, oh, I like oh, Estee Lauder. I adore. I, adore. I adore that as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Any other pros for the great man, um, Dave? Yeah, look, he's very much a gentleman. Um, always respectful. Um, opens car doors. Opens the door of a restaurant for me to enter. So yeah, he gets all those yep. ticks there. Right, and when you're on holiday, just on the, on the pros, on holiday, um, you guys have a great time. It's fun. It's, you know... Oh, look, it is fun, but, you know, when it's time to get, you know, a little bit intimate, because it's been a while being a divorcee now for some time. Sure. Um, you know, he throws some things at me and says, oh, I'd really like to put this um, sexy silk underwear on. It kind oh. of chills the vibe when you, you know. Oh. The vibe. And so that's moving so that's into the cons, cons list, okay. is it? That, that things yeah, are... It, it, it starts he, as, a, as a pro because you're quite intimate and starting yeah. to, you know, show a bit of perfection, but then it just kills it off. Mm, pros does and he, cons. Have, a, quite does he have a few fetishes, fetishes um, Leanne, or fantasies? Is that what you're saying? Is, it, is he. Uh, uh, well, it, it, yes, with silk and ribbons and things, yes. Okay, okay, okay and it makes you feel ribbons. uncomfortable. Um, it, that's just a tag. Yeah, a tag. yeah that's that's a, and that's okay. If you're finding your way again as well, it can be... And it, it can. Have yeah. you told how him do you get? How do you yeah. get through that, Tom? Is it hard to with, with oh. when tying of the ribbons and stuff? Or can you just? <laughs> it's just a standard reef knot. Um, any other any other cons? <laughs> any other, left over, right, right over, left. Uh, any other cons at all, Leanne? <laughs> oh, look, you know, when we're relaxing after it's all said and done, he likes to watch Two and a Half Men. Oh, oh you've got to get rid of him, Leanne. Are you, you're not even. What? You're not joking, are you? No, I'm not. Two you know and a what? half men. If I knew that I had to go, uh, I, uh, if I knew the result oh, was going to be two and a half men, I wouldn't do the act. Like I'd go, no, no one's no, worry asking about you that. to tie ribbons, no, no, mate. mate you, got you, no threat you, of that. The point is, she's you upset sex in the city with your sister. And what a great, what a great series, <laughs> Leanne. You know what? 
<laughs> can I say, I'm Leanne? Listening, can Kate. I... I'm listening, Kate. Yeah, I look, look, Kate's Leanne. How I'm how talking. old are you, Leanne? And how old is he? I'm fifty four. Yeah. And he's 49. Yeah, okay. Look, he may open the door for you and he may take you on nice holidays and things, but I think that if you're, you're making your way back into that world, um, you need to you need to feel comfortable and at ease and there needs to be mutual respect. And I just... When, the way you're talking about it, there sounds like it just feels a bit icky. So I think you can move on and be... Is you it know, a and, and know that there is something else out there for you. No, I know what you're going to say. It's not a crime to speak up for what you would want. But if it does make the other person feel uncomfortable... But have you said anything, Leanne? Have you said to him, hey, why don't we stick to sort of some more traditional things and, and hold the ties? Well, I've just asked him, why doesn't he like the underwear I'm wearing? Mine's late. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he asks cool. you to swap over. Well, they're the silks. Yes. Uh, Could you wear a silk black nighty? Just a little one. Hmm. OK. <laughs> you know what, Leanne? You'll be fine. Move on. <laughs> it could be worse. Look, Thanks, it's... Kate. I think I've crashed and burned again. No, no, don't have that. No, don't have that no. attitude. It's all part of a, the learning curve. Yeah, he hasn't suggested a swing or anything and like you know, that. Or... And you know what, Leanne? If you've worked hard to be out of a marriage in the first place, the last thing you want to do is find mm. yourself back in a relationship yeah. willy-nilly for no... You well know said, what I mean? Kate, well, that's why you're in a relationship yeah. for willy-nilly. Don't, yeah. don't you Don't you think? You know what I mean? You, we'd rather be on your your own and loving yourself. There you go. That, that's what? exactly right. You know, yeah. he's not I've suggesting got... someone else that's, to come into the that's bedroom. That's sick. No, I don't mean that. Well, maybe. I mean, it depends what floats your boat. But I'm just saying, there's no point being in an unhappy anything. No, it's just a, no it's just I agree. A, it's just a silk naughty, mate. No, it's, it's, it's actually it's not. Like... There are so many layers <laughs> here. It doesn't sound like it. Oh, my goodness. Do you know what we should do? Mm. We should have a bit of news. <laughs> I might go to the ladies and hmm? then... <laughs> Hasn't been that heavy. Well, I'll have a single malt no, then no, and a no, cigarette. No, 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 I just mean <laughs> oh, it, could be that, it could be that time. It's 8 o'clock and then we're going to come that back. Time. <laughs> Man, I thought it was only the cats on heat. We're going to come back. Okay, I'm not going to the ladies. I'm going to eat my mango and yogurt. <laughs> Stop talking. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. This is a bit exciting. A huge announcement from the Shane Warn Legacy team. A special edition of Monopoly that reflects his larger-than-life personality. This is awesome. There's only 23,000 sets available, Fitz. you got to oh. rush in. you got to be quick. You know, I'm on a Monopoly board. You are? Yeah. How do you the, fit into a Monopoly uh, board? There, there was a, there was a, um, a, a great charity mm-hmm. in Adelaide, um, the McGuinness McDermott Foundation, and they put together an, an Adelaide Crows board, right? right. And as a joke... Because I only played eight games for the club, they put me down as one. I think I was Paul Mall or something like oh, that. You were I the was cheap the. One. I was the cheap one, and the worst thing about it, they put this photo of me dropping a marker. Uh, it was so bad. How much did it cost I, to buy Fitzy? Well, I was so excited, thinking that I'm going to be on this board, and then I just I look like an absolute. <laughs> but but <laughs> so what's on Warner's board? I'm going to pay twenty bucks to buy Fitzy again. <laughs> Always costing me. Um, well, this is the exciting thing. So when you sit down and you open the board, and I tell you what, even one in 23 ordered come with a special collector's edition sleuth. Um, when you sit down, the customised tokens, you know, that you go around the board, like the yeah, hack gotcha. or the dog, yes. um, on warnings. Is there a dart? On, <laughs> I don't think there's a dart. Can of baked beans? No, there's a cricket ball yeah. um, that has the legendary spin on it. It's got a slice of pizza as one. Right. It's got a fly. Floppy hat. As you Elizabeth make, Hurley, is she one? Or no. just her breasts, I think. <laughs> um, that's unconfirmed at this stage. Uh, the family's obviously been behind this. And uh, Jackson Warner's come out and said, if you'd told me 
money that he was going to end up on a Monopoly board and people could play a game based on his life achieve- achievements, I would have laughed and said that is too good to be true. Yeah. So they're loving this. But what's exciting, and well done to Hasbro for getting behind it, is that you can spin up things like you land on community chest and you've got a baked beans emergency. Because oh, Warney loved right. his beans. Must yes. get to the bathroom. Yeah. Baked beans emergency. Yeah, yeah. Do not pass. What about, I mean, mm. uh, God, what a, I well, mean, he's he liked the high life towards yeah. the end of his life, oh, didn't he? I'm, so gl- he, I'm glad you brought that up because you might uh, pick up another community chest and you'll end up in a Lamborghini that is flying around the board to one of his, one of his favourite locations, possibly home to the driveway in Brighton, Melbourne. Uh, well, he, <laughs> he loved a few community chests over the years as well himself, mm. didn't he? He did. <laughs> He would he would give back to community chest a lot. Um, some of the videos I've seen are extraordinary. Um, you're right. You can spin around the board in a Lamborghini, and you might end up at Liz Hurley's house. You Do know? you go to jail still, or is, it, is it the jail still there? Do not collect go. Do mm-hmm. not pick up a pack out of Peter Stevenson's on the way. Um, you can spin up golf adventures, which is terrific. So you can <laughs> land there and head to one of Australia's great golf courses. Maybe you'll be in Scotland at St Andrews. I mean, it would be really exciting if in you know how you have you have what do you have? Community chest and chance. Yeah, yeah. Those two piles. Chance was an actual text message that Warney had sent a girl. <laughs> <laughs> so people that knew Shane or that he'd slid into their DMs, they submitted it and it ended up on a chance card and you had to read out the chance of him turning up at your front door. Getting it at the right time, just mm-hmm. as the summer of cricket is about to well start done, as well. Guys. The Warney Monopoly board. ShaneWarnLegacy.com.au There is only 23,000 available. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Cape Ritchie podcast. Alright, brand new adventure reality TV series. I'm really looking forward to this. The big trip. Basically, you've got a heap of celebrities that are dumped in the middle of Australia and they've got to get to the Sydney Harbour Bridge as quick as they can. Who's, hey. d- who's dumped them in the middle of well, Australia. This is the thing. I mean, it took you 40 minutes just to get to the Harbour Bridge this morning, didn't it, Cable? Oh, oh my God. It, oh, it can take me 40 minutes to get down to Voca Street uh, well, sometimes. Oh, bloody well said, mate. Classic, classic stuff. Let's continue the last with this absolute legend, Lemo Welcome! Oh, yeah, the So, Lemo... Lemo. Like, what a joy it is to be with you! Hey, I don't know, I don't know what you were talking about, Fitz. I'm calling through for Taylor Swift tickets in Vancouver. Oh. Come on, guys! Well, Hit you're, me up. you're on the show, uh, mate. You're in the, the running. running. So, Lemo, when you get a phone call and they say you're going to be on an adventure, it's going to take three to four weeks to film. Really tough chat to have with your wife because yeah. obviously you didn't want to do the gig. I mean. Pretending to be in two minds to my wife was really tested my acting skills. Yeah, we like, all do that, don't we? I'd love to do it, babe, but the time away from you guys is going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then when you're away and you're filming it, and it was uh, it was unreal doing this show, mm. when you do the phone calls home to go, oh, we're just flat out, babe. It's like 14 hour days. Oh. No one's having fun here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, killing me out here. Do you know what though? I I feel like you feel a bit threatened in the family at the moment because your son Laddie is, I think, he's an emerging comedian now and could be overtaking Dad at oh, any stage, right. Lemo. I tell you what, you know, since I was jealous for a little while, but now I'm now I'm looking at an early retirement. Yeah, so I'm happy to get the young fella working and start bringing in the bucks. You know, he, t- he told a joke on a cruise ship earlier this year mm-hmm. right, where I was working, he's happened to be there, got up and told a joke in front of 500 people, uh. filmed it, put it on Instagram. It's had two and a half million views, <laughs> that joke. And wow. get out of this, right, for weirdness, Sharon Stone commented on it. Oh, Real Sharon Stone. No way. Like, how, how adorable. Love heart, love heart, love heart. My childhood crush is crushing on my child. Yeah. <laughs> and the hard part, Lemo, is he's too young for you to explain why you love her so much. <laughs> exactly. I can't sit him down and go through the back catalogue of Sharon Stone films just yet. <laughs> this is great. Oh, All right. I love that. So um, thanks to Hyundai and Channel 7, you are starting in the middle of a 
Australia and you've got to get to the Harbour Bridge as quick as you can. So, yeah. um, And then you're giving away a heap of hybrid and EV cars. Is this correct to lucky fans? That's right. So we give four cars away. We uh, we finish at the Rocks in Sydney yeah. where we give away uh, these four Hyundais and it's a... Uh, it's nice to be able to give the cars away after we've flogged the guts out of them no. across the country. Oh. Uh, <laughs> what, 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 one what can they... in my CV, Kate, I can tell you. Uh, do you mean donuts in the... Do you mean the edible uh, donuts, donuts or donuts that you do in a car? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, no, the donuts you do in a car. Uh, Fitzy was raised on donuts. Oh, my down the right. south of Adelaide. There That's is what a I'll be looking for. to. Very too. funny line in the promo <laughs> where you and Dilrook are in, in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing around and Dilrook goes, yeah. well, his line was, "It's isn't it funny? It's so sparse. There's so much room. It's just funny why a lot of Australians use the term F off, we're full. <laughs> <laughs> there is plenty of room out there, I can tell you. I'll tell you this about Dilrook, though, who's my partner on this particular road trip. There's mm. four teams of two. Dil and I are teammates. We get to the middle of the Nullarbor. We've got to drive 3,500 kilometres to Sydney. We're about to start on this adventure, and Dill says to me, oh, by the way, Lemo, I don't have my licence. Oh, you're kidding me. And I put him in the back. It was like driving this daisy. It's oh, right? a long way. Of course. Oh, my God. Well, it's, it's 8.30 Wednesday night. You can catch it on Channel 7. It's called The Big Trip. Love you, Lemes. Thank you very much for coming on the show, mate. Good on your team. And these Taylor Swift tickets, do you need an address to send yeah, those to? Yeah, no, we're, we're no, you're that, in mate. the running, mate. You're in the running. <laughs> Don't ring us. We'll oh. ring you. Thanks, Lee, mate. Okay, thanks, guys. <laughs> See you, buddy. See you, mate. The Fitzy and Ripper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. We like the life improver. How good's the life improver? Oh, yeah, the life improver. Your life improver. Start your free everyday extra subscription and get extra savings on your shop at Woolworths and Big W. Exclusions and T's and C's apply. See everydayextra.com.au. That's right. Not only do you get in the running for Taylor Swift, you get $500 cash to spend at Woolies. Thanks to Everyday Extra. What is your life hack? Let's change this world for the better this morning. Sam in Blackson, hello. Good morning. What do you got, Sammy? I have the best life hack for first thing in the morning. I have a timer switch on my kettle that yeah. it goes off three minutes before my alarm wakes up. So when I wake up, my kettle's already boiled for that cup of tea. Oh, oh that is such so good planning. If only I could work out how to do it. Oh, it's so easy. Mm. How do so, you do it? Sam, so easy. Is, this a, is there a certain brand, a certain type no. of kettle? No. No, it's a normal, everyday kettle, and it's a timer switch. It's a timer thing. You pick them up... Um, Oh, I know which ones you're talking about. Yeah, Yeah, you can put them on your lights when you go on holidays and stuff. Exactly the same. And it just, you set it so it goes off just before you wake up. It's fantastic. So you get out of bed and go, how's it? And it's boiled and you're ready to have your cup of tea. No, you're ready to go. How do you have your tea, Sam? Sorry? Don't worry. (laughs) What what type of tea do you have, Sam? English breakfast tea. Oh, well done. Good, That's lovely. all we need. Classic. Classic. Ben in Elwood, give us a life hack, Benny. Yeah, g'day, guys. Um, so this one's for all the barbecuers. Here we uh, go. If you can't find uh, fire lighters to get your fire started when you're lighting yeah. your charcoal, you can use Doritos. What do you mean you can use Doritos? You can light well, a Dorito, can them. you? Yeah, they they um they have uh, a few different types of oil in them, and so they which are all flammable. And so if you get them past a certain <laughs> point with a with a match, you can get them going. Oh, Ooh, that you gotta be very careful when yeah. you're eating Doritos and having a banger. <laughs> you do. You, you might light shift. up. They're your little makeshift jiffies, are they? Doritos. Yep, yep they're uh, perfect for it. Do you know what? Every party has Doritos as well, don't they? Oh, my corn God. Corn chips. Everyone's got a corn chip. Gee, oh, no, Benny. it's not a party without a corn chip. Best thing you've said all day, Kate. Madison, <laughs> hello. Hey, guys. What's your so life improvement? My, my life improver is for all those people that work online or work in the office. Um, you just schedule all your emails before so you can log off early, take the day off, and no one's going to know. Right, so you schedule them to go out the oh. next day so you look busy and active. Yeah, I've actually done this before and no one's caught on when I went on a holiday. So I didn't have to oh. take PTO or anything. I love the working <laughs> from home hacks. I love it. Like it's... Mm-hmm. So, 
Do you know, this is how genius we are as a human race, that when we go through such a tragedy like the pandemic, people work their way around to make their life a yeah. lot easier yeah. for being at home. Gave us a lot of time to think to ourselves, didn't we, when we were at home? Do you know, to come up with these hacks. It's clever. And, Tommy, how many emails would you write a day? About 100? Oh, yeah, hun- yeah 100, 120. So when you write them and it looks yeah. like you've got up at 3 a.m., you've actually just timed them to no, go. No, I've actually got up at 3 a.m. Yeah. You yeah. are up. I wish I had a hack for that. Oh, my God. You're at, you know what, Tommy? You're yeah. our hack on this show, mate. Oh, thank you. Every day. Our thank life you. improver. No, oh, more that's just a hack. Oh, just a hack. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Karen in Terrigal. Hi, Kaz. Good morning, guys. Oh, How are you? Good, yeah, Karen. Good. Don't yell at us, Karen. Just settle down. Oh. What? Just give us a life hack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so mine's is a uh, travel hack. Uh, so mine's is to check in late to the airport. So when you put your luggage in... Uh, it comes out first on the other end. This does work. Does it, it really? Works. Because yeah. let me tell you this, I, I've got a couple of mates who are baggage handlers and they do say, because I say to them, because I've am i I've got a status, a higher status Whoa. with Qantas. Oh, do you? Oh, okay. Ooh la la. Because I, yeah, I do a fair bit of travelling, oh, mate. Oh, my God, the Prime Minister's uh, arrived. I, I asked them, <laughs> if I've got that if I've got that status on on my bag, on my sticker on the bag, do yeah. I, does that come out first? And they went, no. Nah. Doesn't, well, what, that the doesn't priority work. sticker? I said, well, what comes out first? He goes, the last bag that goes on. Really? Because I yeah. always say to them, do you reckon you could throw a business class sticker on it? Do you? Yeah. God, you guys are so... <sighs> you you it doesn't work, work, mate. Well, it I doesn't work. It did. I think it works. I think it works against you. Well, they just kick a little <laughs> bit more. Yeah, <laughs> when you start demanding things at the desk. Yeah, <laughs> it means throw the bag to There's the ground. There's an alert that goes out. Um, $500, what are we going to do here? Oh, I mean, this is... Cool. Kate, I didn't know Doritos are yeah, good little jiffies. Benny's Dorito, Kate Richie. I think it has to go to Benny Norwood. Benny, you've got it. Hey, excellent. Benny, five hundred dollars cash much. to spend at Woolies. Imagine how many Doritos you can buy with that. Oh, well, that's a fair few bags. Thanks, guys. Really oh my okay. God, thanks for every day extra. Good on you, mate. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Richie podcast. What have you got? Um, a sports report. Oh, you got the sports update. <laughs> oh, yes. Great, I love it. What are we talking? I know that's Cricket. why people tune in to uh, Nova in the mornings. Kate Ritchie doing the sport. Oh, no you update on the AFL trade season. No, nothing like that. I just wanted to uh, look. This story is about sport, but it's about friendship and about great people supporting others okay. when they are secure love in that. their own space. Uh, of course, uh, Nadal has played his final match of professional. Tennis. He was played in the Davis Cup. Yep. The Netherlands were beaten by Spain, so he's he's bowed out. And that and no, he is Spain, so he bowed out. I think the Netherlands. What beat did I Spain. say? Yeah, that didn't I say Netherlands beat Spain? Sorry. No, anyway, I'm just, I'm he's just not. You in, mate. He's not playing. Um, and it was a sad moment, I guess, when you know you've kind of scored your last point and all yeah. of that. But he. Uh, he received a letter from Roger Federer earlier in the week in the lead up to this, you know, his last campaign. And it is so heartfelt and lovely and generous. And I think it, I mean, it's lovely for Nadal, but it also mm. goes to show what we already know, which I think is that Roger Federer is a pretty great tennis player, but also a really great guy. Can you hold on for two seconds, Kate? Mm. Jess, um, I think it would be important to get some Alphorns going because I would like you to read it in a Swiss accent as Roger Federer. <laughs> I'm not going to read it as a... Oh, no, I don't, don't do accents. I, I do know, Cats I know, me. on Heat... But no well, accents. I don't know if I, me. Can I just say there's a documentary called 12 Final Days on Amazon Prime of Roger Federer's last 12 days as a tennis player. And you should see Rafael Nadal and the amount of tears that he had for Roger and the beautiful words he says. So I think this is just reciprocated here, Kate, because yeah. they, they are best mates. Well, and that's what he, that's what he actually he said. He said that we were both at the start of our journey. This is Roger. In the accent, yeah. No, we were both at the start of our journey. It's one we ended up taking together. 20 years later, Rafa, I have to say what an incredible run you've had, including 14 French Opens. Historic. You made Spain proud. You made the whole tennis world proud. I think they've been on tour together. They're, yeah, you yeah. know, the kids, uh, Roger's kids went to Rafa's academy, I think, the tennis academy and he even jokes in this letter that he was worried that his kids might come home playing with their left hand. Yeah, he says, I joke. <laughs> he doesn't 
say that. Um, he's he's also been generous enough to say to Rafi, you made me reimagine my game, even going so far as to change the size of my racket head, wow. hoping for any edge. And you know what, Rafa, you made me enjoy the game even more. I just think it's lovely. He, he finishes by saying, "I'm going to. I'm always going to be cheering you on. I'm your friend, and I can't wait to see yep. what you do next." Because it's you know for Roger and Rafa and Nadal, like to think. Oh, now, have I saved up enough money from tennis to to get through the rest of my mm, life? Mm. It's 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 a tough time financially. Am I set up? Yep. Can I put a meal on the table, or, or I need to lean on the other one? When tough times hit, we're able we're going to be able to get through it together. <laughs> no, I know what you mean, Kate. And I just look. I think it's really nice. I also think he's they they are using the words graduating from tennis rather than retiring and yeah. see you later. Your life's over because his life his life is not over. He'll have to work out who he is without tennis, and I, I just yeah. think that's lovely. Gardening rounds worth, worth putting some words down sometimes. Well, I just wish Nick Kyrgios would write a beautiful letter like this for Bernard Tomic or something like that, yeah. or, or either way. Well, just with you school. know, it may Bern. inspire him. For you never or Bernard know. Tomic just writes to Kyrgios, Oi, doofus. Listen, oh, I heard you lost again. You haven't even played for a year and a half. We'll see I'm out here slugging away. What you doing, loser face? I've still got my uh, yellow Porsche that I drive up on the Gold Coast. You should come, How to, you been? come to Bernard. schoolies with me, Ben. Why are you doing that? They're sort of different sort of characters, the two of them, aren't they? What, compared to Rafa and and Roger? Roger Federer, yeah. You're sort of a different sort of league. Absolutely. Anyway, you work out the difference. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. Ever heard of a band called Pink Floyd? Just a bit, mate. Mm. Just a bit. I'll turn it up, Jess. So you think you could tell. What a song. Heaven from hell. Did this in year 12 on the guitar. That's like... A music um, concert. They did a concert in year 12, and I went, Yeah, I'll do a song, man. Yeah, I'm going to bring in the six string. Punched out a bit of Pink Floyd. Um, it was great. I mean, they loved it. If you're asking, story. if you want to know more, talk to me after nine. I think I have yeah, a Pink great. Floyd t shirt. Do you? Tune into the podcast if you would like to yeah, hear more on that Pink story. Floyd special. Um, David Gilmore and Roger Waters are the two main men, the geniuses behind Pink Floyd. David Gilmore, I mean, Doing all right for himself. Royalties, Kate. He's doing okay. Wow. Right? Yeah, I bet. He's, he's doing all right. But how's this? This is an interesting one. Over a decade ago, he bought a house in London for £15 million. Pounds. So what are we talking here? About $23 million? Yeah, you're hitting it. At the time he bought it, right, he bought it... Um, in his company's name, he had a company called Hoveco Limited, mm. right? So he bought it through the company, but then Hoveco Limited went bust, so it just finished up, right? But what happened, there was an admin error when the company finished up and they didn't transfer the ownership of his property from from the company to into him. his name. And there's a rule over in England that if you don't transfer it, it then automatically passes over to the Crown. So David Gilmore this year went to go sell his house and the government stepped in and went, no, nah, that's not your house, Dave, that's we ours. That. <gasps> no way. Reckon we get split any profit on it then? Can I have a 20, little bit of it? $23 million. He's now no obviously gone to, he's gone to court to try and get the transfer of the house into his name. Has he got it back? It's, it's just the raw, that's the UK law. I mean, who forgot to do it? If assets of a business are not transferred before a company is dissolved, it automatically passes to the Crown. Oh, look, if there's an admin error, I'm sure we can sort something out. Something will be sorted out. Do you know what I mean? But he, uh, I mean, that's not his only house, surely. That's I don't it. think that was his nest egg, was it? That's it. You reckon he's oh, drifted off to one, of, one, two, three, four, five properties? Maybe. I don't want to pass judgment on anyone. You would That's suspect. And like the uh, mm-hmm. Madden Brothers said in that a magnificent song, Lifestyles of the Rich and the Famous, guys. <laughs> well, you love them, don't you? That's, that's about the fifth time you've mentioned them this Never week. thought we'd get out on the Madden Brothers. <laughs> uh, but thanks for tying it all back in. Now it makes sense, mate. <laughs> Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great shows like this, download the Nova Player via the App Store or Google Play. The Nova Player.